how do you bring what you were talking about, that salt shaker, the people behind that, right? How do you bring that into crypto, like that the humanity of it, the humanness that is out there? How can we do that, the bridge the gap? Yeah, yeah, it's what I've thought about a lot too. You, you, you know, a lot of people say, well, why are you talking about toxicity? Suck it up, buttercup. Well, if you're that materialistic and that much of an asshole, I'll sell it to you this way. It hurts your investment. Uh, it, toxicity prevents more people from coming in. It prevents the growth of the ecosystem. Who the hell wants to go to a bar when they walk in the front door, there's a bar fight? You're like, nah, I'm going to turn around and go somewhere else because I don't, I don't want none of this. You know, if you have immensely negative, toxic people everywhere and everything is so politicized and factioned, and the minute you step in, like, for example, Fortune 500 adoption, we live in a situation in this industry right now that if a company like Microsoft or Apple decides to do a blockchain project, they will get from day one brutalized for not picking blockchain X or Y and for picking blockchain Z. Normally, when you do a product announcement, you you know you, you're excited. It's it's wow, they're doing this innovative thing, Microsoft Hololens. And they say, how dare you run that on Ethereum? How dare you run that on Bitcoin or something like that? So, as a Fortune 500 company, you start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't do anything in this crypto space. So you've just now denied our industry as a whole tens of millions of new users who will float around and have preferences across the board. So even if Samsung or Ethereum or uh, Microsoft or Google pick blockchain X by bringing their user base there, they've just brought in 10 million new crypto users or something like that, or a billion. And that's good for us all, but you can't get past that with the maximalism and the toxicity. They can't see beyond that. So you ask, well, how do you bring it in this weekend? I did something new. I, it was one o'clock in the morning. I was just about to go to bed and I figured, Hey, it'd be fun to do one of these Twitter spaces for 10, 20 minutes. And so I just said chat with Charles and I created it. I had 1,600 people within five minutes inside the uh, Twitter space at one o'clock in the morning, Mountain Standard Time. I, I ended up speaking for three hours and it was great, really positive experience. A lot, of, a lot of love there, a lot of good people there. So I think part of the experience is understanding that the vast majority of people in the cryptocurrency ecosystem are not toxic and are not bad people and uh, they're just silent. And so they get drowned out by these very radicalized subset of people who, frankly, they're not happy about anything, no matter what you accomplish or what you do. And so you, you don't pay attention to one group and pay attention to the other. That's one side of it. The other thing is you always have to understand the root cause of why people have issues. What's their hidden pain or their issue? A lot of these criticisms are projections. They don't have confidence in themselves or projects or they're concerned about something, so they try to project it onto others in some way to alleviate the issue. There is some legitimate criticism. I mean, if you're too slow or something like that, and that's an issue more of values. So, you know, a lot of people feel, for example, Cardano's too slow to market. Okay. Uh, but we could be real quick to market and half our software can't work. Would that be okay? Uh, would it be okay if every week we had a billion dollars stolen? Or, you know, something like that, like what we're seeing in the industry as a whole, would that, would that be an acceptable outcome? But we ship software five times faster, you know, and then you have to ask yourself, well, what are the values behind that? When people say you're too slow, well, it's because they want money. They figured if you get a larger network effect, the token price goes up and then they can sell, get a Lamborghini. So are they really doing anyone, any service or any good if the vision, mission and goals are about changing the world, not about making a speculator rich? So you have to categorize the toxicity and the criticism and understand the root cause of it. Is it a concern or an issue? Is it just personal greed? Is it a misunderstanding? Is it tribalism? Whatever it happens to be. And then you'll know, just communicate with people the self-defeating nature of what they're doing and how they're communicating and say, look, we can go down this road. You're not going to win, but let's say we go down this road. At the end of the day, um, all you're doing is hurting the ecosystem as a whole. You know, and just try to change perspective. Like if you know a really negative person, what you do is you say, you know, they come in, oh, my knee hurts, my back hurts. Ah, oh, Biden did this. Ah, ah, you know, we all know that Debbie Downer. Um, and so what you do is you take them aside and say, tell me one positive thing. And it yeah. knocks them out. And they're like, ah, now I have I to think it. of something positive, right? And sometimes it's super hard. They like they spend like five minutes just like thinking about it. And then eventually they say something and mumble it under their breath and say, there, that's a start. 
You know, so you see, and, and I, I have one person I know so negative. Every time I run into him, I say, I'm not going to talk to you unless you tell me something positive. So the first thing out of their mouth has to be say, it could be, it's a nice day today. There we go. And they always try to put a, you know, like a negative spin to it. It's a nice day today, but the weather is going to get bad. No, you can just stop it at nice day. That's it. <laughs> I love that. I love that approach. Tell me one good thing or I'm not right. going to talk to you. <laughs> right. That's awesome. 